Northern Norway is built by strong women. The men were historically out at sea on the fishing boats. In this episode of People of the North, you will meet strong women who build on this heritage, creating the modern society of today, north of the polar circle. Welcome to the wild and beautiful Lofoten. Join me on a journey where we will meet people who live, work and enjoy life right here in the far north. I'm joined by star chef Frida Runge, who is culinary leader at some of Stockholm's finest restaurants. She has come all the way up here to look for new creative impulses. My good friend Stig Bareksten is also coming. He's the founder of an award-winning Nordic gin distillery, and he's on the hunt for new and exciting flavors. My name is Arne Eltnes, and I'm taking you to meet the fantastic people of the North. This is Angelita Eriksen. She's taking me across this mountain range to show me her farm, on which she grows a very unusual crop. Angelita, we are now on the top of El Toft Tuva. It's uh, a lot of view in Lofoten. There's a lot of everything. The crazy thing about Lofoten is that it, the mountains are extremely beautiful. The ocean is wild and the weather is also changing extremely fast. So I think these phenomenon are, you know, really uh, getting to us North Norwegians and shaping us and the way we live. So we really, really enjoy living in the moment to capture these natural moments. And we are very curious on, on the strong women that has shaped this society and I believe it's still so. Yes, I've grown up in a, a, fish, a fishing family. My father's a fisherman, but my mother contributed a lot as well. And so did us kids. We were obviously working for my dad. Uh, from the age of 10, I was cutting fish tongues. And when I was 12, I was baiting the long lines and had to get up 4.30 in the morning. And while the fishermen, the men were away, the women were running the business at <laughs> home. Yeah. Was it the special society of Lofoten that made you come back here and start your own business? It definitely a, a big part of it. But seaweed was never a part of my life growing up. I was playing with it on the shores. So when I discovered this amazing world of seaweed, I was just taken away by it. And uh, moving back home, working with the ocean that I loved, getting back to my roots even, and continuing to creating a livelihood from the ocean uh, has been amazing for me. And obviously the future lies in the ocean. And the future of Lofoten lies in the strong women. Seaweed is rapidly becoming a popular ingredient in both the food industry and fine dining all over the world. Here on the oily black rocks of the Norwegian coast, Angelita runs Lofoten Seaweed. Frida asked to join us in harvesting some. I think she's in the hoping to find some inspiration for her own cooking. Guys, if you want to harvest sustainable, you cut the orweed right here, because yeah. then you leave the stem yeah. to grow More and seaweed. regenerate. The problem with Lofoten is that uh, the water in the springtime is the same temperature. <laughs> but we're living in a fridge and it's good for our vegetables. Angelita, the different seaweed has different seasons, right? It's like an uh, underwater garden and when the light comes in the spring, everything comes to life and it grows and it's kind of an explosion. In the winter, we have a few species that really likes the dark, cold conditions. The main season is in May, uh, June. But you harvest all year? Yes. You're we in do. here, yeah. no matter what, how cold, no matter the weather. I have harvested under the northern light with a head torch swearing over the cold. That but sounds having amazing. a great time. But today <laughs> is a, a nice, beautiful, warm day in Lofoten. This is a typical spring day. No. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we can uh, 
move over there to have a look at some other stuff that we want to try in our food, right, Frida? Yes. We want uh, yeah. everything. Don't yeah, you? of course. Angelita founded Lofoten Seaweed together with her friend Tamara Singer from New Zealand. She's taking Stig out to show him unique flavors that are only found in marine plants. Okay, Tamara, tell me. Uh, how did you end up here? You're not from Lofoten. Yeah, that is a good question. Um, it was Angelita's fault, I have okay. to say. Um, we studied together uh, physiotherapy, and um, I was living in London for many years, and she was living in Oslo. We always said that we were going to start something together, but of course we thought it would be a physiotherapy uh, business. Uh, we never knew that we would end up here in Lofoten uh, picking seaweed and creating a seaweed company. But um, I think, you know, coming, growing up from an island like New Zealand. I've always had a real love for the ocean and for the mountains and of course Norway has both of those two things so it feels quite natural to be here and um, to be out, allowed to come here and work with the ocean is really a dream come true for me. Here we are. You can even harvest on land. Yes, and uh, here you see a beautiful little uh, ocean vegetable oh uh, garden. Here we have a whole lot of different species. You have your uh, oh, ocean truffle. truffle. This is something I'm really curious to cook with later on. Just the smell of it, it's so intense of truffle, isn't it? And it's everywhere. <laughs> it's everywhere. It's... Shh, oh. OK, no, it's not <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> yeah, actually, it's, uh, this is the only spot. It, that... It's very rare. Yeah, no, but no, it's no. a very secret spot. A lot has happened in Lofoten since we started. You know, uh, Tamara is uh, half Japanese and she brought all this knowledge about how to use the seaweed in food, showing us all these new flavors. But in the beginning, like five, six years ago, people thought we were crazy. But today, people are more aware that we need to eat more from the ocean. This is something everyone in a couple of years should start to cook with. I have a big wish and it's that I really want to see this more available for people. This could be something that is in the fish counter when you go into a supermarket. Half counter is fish and shellfish, half counter is these fantastic vegetables. I absolutely agree and that is our goal to do. But we need products that people understand because people don't know how to use it. And we need people like you to yeah. show them and then we will you know, try to give easy to use products in the future. That's where we're going. I actually wanted to tell you a little bit about the seaweed I have in my hand here, which is called dulse. Dulse? Yep. And this was a seaweed that was eaten by the Vikings because it's so rich in vitamin C. They took yeah. it out on their long boat journeys to avoid getting scurvy. So they ate this along with stockfish here okay. from Lofoten. Oh, fantastic. Yes. I'm curious to see if there is possibilities to find other aromas yeah. uh, in seaweed as well. We are invited to dine with Tamara in our home later tonight, where Frida is going to prepare something good with the seaweed we have gathered. But first we need to see the sights around Lofoten and pay a visit to the caviar factory that is something out of the ordinary. For more inspiration, visit our website peopleofthenorth.net. Here, art collector Wenke Hoff has established an internationally renowned art gallery that hosts exhibitions from all around the world. Welcome right. to the Thank Caviar you. Factory. What are you exhibiting at the moment? Ai Weiwei, uh, one of the most famous artists in the world. I would like for you to tell us the story about the Caviar Factory. I would love to. Wow, what a room! When I came to Henningsvær in 97, I saw the old building. It used to be a, a caviar factory until mid-90s. When I saw the building, I had a feeling it belonged to the art world. And you have kept the original structure of the caviar factory? Yeah, I wanted to keep it as industrial as it was. And you see the glass, it yeah. used to be wood there. Uh, you see all the tree, and they were, you know, you are taking yeah. things up and yeah. down, and mm. the fish came in. Through the window. Through the window. Or it was not a window. It was it probably was, a, yeah, door. a gate. And, and these are the products that were actually made here. Yes, it started by the Mathilde Bodevik. And you know, a lot of women in Henningsvær, they had the first job here. So if you walk around in Henningsvær, you will meet a lot of still young women. Yeah. <laughs> who will say that they had their they first job. They worked here, yes. It is fascinating that it was a woman entrepreneur who started the caviar production here at the caviar factory, and it was a woman who saved the caviar factory. 
The featured artwork from Chinese sculpture IYY uses traditional materials like porcelain and marble, but also twine, silk and even Lego. Venke has transformed the old derelict factory into a space to which people from all over the world travel to experience art. In all the, uh, it's a, maybe a happy reindeer. <laughs> or, <laughs> or a dog. Venke. Tell me about some of the artists that had their exhibition here at the Caviar Factory. We opened the Caviar Factory in 2013, but since we bought the lighthouse, we have had guests from all over the world. We did a project four years ago. It was a friend of mine, Louisa Farsko from Copenhagen. She was in New York together with Yoko Ono, and then Yoko Ono said, I always had a dream to do something in the lighthouse. You don't know anyone up north with a lighthouse. <laughs> and then Louisa said, yes, I do. They called me and we decided to make the exhibition in January. On top of the lighthouse, it was a light flashing, I love you, so you could see it so far away. Love out to all the fishermen. Yes, and you know, a fisherman told me when it ended in uh, end of February, I think. He missed it so much. <laughs> <laughs> you have a very special piece of jewelry here. It's actually a caviar tube with a crown on that uh, you would wear. But this was given to you, Venke, by a very special person. Yes, in 2017, the Queen of Norway, Sonja, who is very interested in art, she opened the exhibition, Painting or Not, officially. After the opening, we had a lunch. And I saw that she was wearing the jewelry during the opening, and then she took it off her dress and gave it to me. And, and this was a piece of jewelry she had had for 20 years? Yeah, it's an art piece from a Norwegian artist called Konrad Mehus, and you can see it here in front of the... Yeah. Yeah. So it was so personal. I, don't th I think it's the most personal gift I ever got. It's, it's yeah. uh, like being knighted by the Queen when she gives away her personal belongings. And she is a frequent guest here, the yes, Queen of Norway. Yes, she's come here every summer since 2012, the year before we opened. When she's in Lofoten, she sees all the art places. Lovely. While I say goodbye to Venke and the factory, Frida has already started preparing a dinner with Tamara. I'm so curious to hear about how you cook with the ingredients from here. One might say that, you know, Norwegian and Japanese food is really, really different. But the thing that they really have in common is the love for food from the sea. Both countries are surrounded by the ocean and we both have access to all that seaweed growing out there. But I think um, Japan needed another food source from the sea. They needed something that could be stored without fridges and freezers. But I think in Norway, we've been a little bit um, lucky with all the access to fish, and it hasn't been a demand to find new food sources from the sea. Mm. But that is coming now as everyone's becoming aware that we have to find new food sources. Yeah. Seaweed will be a part of the Norwegian diet, just mm. like in Japan. Before you moved here, did someone eat uh, Norwegian seaweed. There have been other people, um, no one here in Lofoten, but in other parts of Norway that has um, started to use seaweed. And we came on quite early, it was about six years ago, and back then people thought we were crazy. Like they really uh, were nervous yeah. to try it. Mm -hmm. And are you sure? And yeah, so it was a really strange concept. Mm -hmm. Seaweed is such an amazing ingredient to use in the food. Um, and it's got so many different ways of using it as well. All the seaweed is just so good for the ocean. It's absorbing um, CO2 and exactly. releasing oxygen. It buffers the ocean, it makes it less acidic. So it's actually super sustainable in every way. Absolutely. Everything is so interesting and I'm excited to start to cook. Yes. So you will do the guama wakame salad. Yeah. And I'm gonna do some really cool different mackerels. Sounds good. So let's start. Okay. So when I do sushi, I usually always have a little bowl with um, water on the side because then the rice is not sticked to my fingers. Yes. So that's a good little trick I learned a couple of years ago. I 
I really want you to, to try this, uh, Tamara, and uh, please tell me what you think it is. Tastes like ginger. Yes, that's correct. How do you usually eat ginger when you have sushi? Like the Japanese gari. Exactly. Yep. But this is actually made from turnips. And you know, turnips is growing everywhere in the Nordics. Yeah. And instead of importing ginger gari from Asia, I thought it was cool to make my own gari. So it's actually pickled uh, turnip in, wow. in ginger. Because the texture is exactly the same. And yeah. The taste is like ginger. That's, a, that's amazing. Tamara and Frida, what a wonderful uh, meal you have created for us. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. More or less everything is from here. Yeah. Almost, almost everything, yeah. And we've had the wonderful days here, harvesting and being able to see what, what you can bring out from uh, the sea here. Mm. I think it's a glorious future because we have, we have just barely started exploring the sea. We are keen on trying some of this b before we move on from Lofoten uh, Stig. It's sad. It's sad, and I'm super hungry. <laughs> <laughs> You're always super hungry. Always. Yeah, what we've learned is that uh, there's more than fish in Lofoten, and there's also women entrepreneurs. And yes, this, absolutely. The story goes a long way back, and you are the newest generation of the strong women entrepreneurs that has been forming Lofoten to what it is. Mm -hmm. And if girls make this, uh, we love girls. <laughs> <laughs> We enjoy the food and company of these two inspiring entrepreneurs through the evening. And as night falls, I find myself thinking that if seaweed really is the food of the future, I think we're going to do just fine. For more inspiration, visit our website peopleofthenorth.net. There are other things you can do in the kingdom of the cod and seaweed. The morning after our meal, we decide to try and catch the mighty waves of Lofoten. Frida is still out there trying to hit the right wave. But this is nothing for beginners, especially here when they, where you have the giant ocean and if you don't have the technique, so I'm staying on shore. I thought actually it was so much easier when I was standing here on land, but the ocean is so powerful. It's really hard, but anyway, it's amazing to just be in the water. And the thing is that it's not actually cold. I'm not freezing at all, and the water is just amazing. The most comfortable way to travel on the northern coast is by ship. We are headed out to sea to view the coast from the fisherman's side. Stieg has decided to mix up a classic dry martini in a way that will make our voyage feel just a little bit smoother. Now it's my turn again, and I'm gonna make a dry martini. This time I will do a 50-50, the kind of original dry martini. So that's uh, gin. And, so it's a 50-50, so it's the same amount of the dry vermouth as well. Same procedure, stir it, cold. So, so this I will garnish with a classic uh, dry martini garnish, olive. Since it's a lunch martini, it's okay to have some food in it as well. I hope they like it. Wow! Hello. Hello. How are you? I made, I made you a martini, oh. but since we probably have a little bit more work left today. Uh, I made a lunch variation of it, so it's uh, a little bit less uh, gin and more of the vermouth. And then I used the classic uh, garnish because it, then it's more like a meal. Tingling. Tingling. Lovely, not so strong. No. Mm, it's fantastic. I think this is better since it's quite early. Mm. And it goes with a view. Yeah. 
maybe you'd like some bubbles. Yes. Hey. It's a great way to see Norway, the scenery along the coast, local food from the places we pass by. Can't be a better journey than this. For sure. It's so beautiful and tasty. <laughs> Wow, I am uh, lucky to be on the bridge of this uh, fantastic modern vessel. Tom Rune, you're the captain. Yeah. This uh, ship is brand new. What's special about it? It's the green side of the ship. It's a hybrid and we have battery package. You can be in a port and you can uh, switch off the engine. Quiet. And, uh, quiet. We can enter the fjords only with battery. Yeah, because so there switch. will be restrictions. Only ship with this kind of technology. Can go there? Yeah. So then yeah. people must get on board with you to see Yes, them. of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. So this is the sustainable future of traveling on the Norwegian coast? Yeah, it is, it is. What are the reactions from uh, the passengers? The passengers like it a lot. If they are traveling with us, they will see uh, everything. There's the big towns, the small. If you want to see the real coast. If you want to see the real coast, you have to sail with us. <laughs> yeah, that's... <laughs> and uh, Jöran, you're the second officer. What's the thrill about being uh, the second officer on a ship like this? Uh, I think it's the tough navigation at the Norwegian coastline. Absolutely. And maneuvering a big ship in small harbors. And we also service the harbors with fish, local people. But we are also showing the passengers all over the world what the Norwegian coastline have to, to show us. Mountains, sea, everything. And you're actually both from the north of Norway. Yeah. So you know you're used to this kind of weather. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Okay guys, so after all this delicious food, I thought it was time for a fish burger, a salmon burger from Kvarøy. It's some mustard, some mayonnaise, some fresh vegetables, and some fresh uh, lemon on the top. I hope you like it. Mmm. Mm, super good. You can't go wrong with a salmon burger for a foodie like Stig and myself. <laughs> we are going places, but first we're gonna finish this burger. And then we are going places. <laughs> but on the other hand, the boat is actually going places <laughs> while we eat the salmon burger. Anyway, more adventures to come. This leg of our journey has been all about Lofoten and the amazing women who keep up the proud tradition of building a rich society next to the sea. Because of people like Angelita, Tamara and Wenke, Lofoten is facing down the future of our planet without even flinching, and even while keeping history in mind. Of course, it's all thanks to the strong women of the North. <laughs>